Hi, I'm Jilly Bean Fitzhenry, and I'm really excited to share another project with you called Rose Delight. I'm going to show you my extender blending method of painting with acrylics, which makes it much easier to blend and be able to achieve more dimension with a fast drying acrylic. So the extender will help you blend a little bit longer. To start with, let me go through some of the uh, supplies that you need to do the project. Um, you'll need gray graphite paper and a stylus and some tape. I have just a very limited amount of brushes that I'm using on this project. A small liner, and I do love the black gold uh, by Dynasty, the 20 aught script. And I use a blending brush. It's a dry brush blender. A quarter inch angle brush, a half inch angle brush, and then another brush that's one of my favorites made specially for me. It's called the Jilly Bean Dirty Dancer, and it's a double-ended uh, brush, and that's what I'm going to use to do the majority of my technique. You'll also need a paper palette, a um, little cup to put some extender in, a water bowl, some paper towel, and a canvas that's base coated with like a medium white. Uh, at the end, I'm going to show you my technique for doing kind of a little modeled background and then a stencil is going to be used. So I use a DecoArt stencil and there's lots of options available as to which uh, stencil you choose to do that background. So let's get started. Uh, to begin with, I already have my uh, little canvas base coated, and this is just a um, six by eight canvas. You certainly could enlarge the um, design and put it on a larger piece. I have base coated the entire piece using the um, Dynasty Palmer brushes. These have like a stiff bristle, and they allow me to really get that paint base coated onto the surface a lot faster. So that really is a time saver. Um, I have my pattern already traced on. What I've done is I printed it out on vellum and so that I can see through it and I slipped the graphite paper underneath and I was able to transfer the design with the stylus. Now I've left my lines a little bit darker than what you probably want yours. If you want to soften them a little bit that would be great. Um, if you get them too dark, a um, eraser like a white eraser or a kneadable eraser would really work great to help soften the lines. So I would just take the eraser and I would lightly go over all of the lines that I traced on to make them a little bit lighter, but just enough so that you can still see them. But I'll leave mine darker just so that it's easier for you to see where I'm going with all the colors. Okay, let's get started. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to start with my highlights, and I put on some of the Traditions um, uh, Titanium White, and that's what I'm going to use to begin with. So I'm going to put some of that out on my palette. And you don't need a whole lot of any particular color for this project. Um, I have already painted this once before, so I'm just going to show you. I have some step-by-steps that will also be available for you to print out to go along with this video. Uh, you'll be able to see exactly where I put the highlights in on the rows, and uh, that makes it a lot easier for you to follow along with me. So to begin with, I'm going to get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And I've got some extender blending medium, and that's also a DecoArt Traditions product. And I'm going to put some of that in a little cup. If I put it on the palette, it seems to kind of run all over the place. So it's better to have a little cup uh, to put that in. And I'll begin by using my half inch angle brush and dip that into the extender. And then I want to blot that off on my paper towel. And I'm going to use that to base all the petals of the rose. Now, if you're just starting out and you haven't been painting for a while, you might want to do just a couple petals at a time. But I'm going to show you how to do this quickly today. So I should be able to get this all brushed in there. And you don't have to stay inside the lines. 
So really work that down into the surface and then you'll want to kind of check it to make sure you don't have too much on there. So if you just kind of slightly tip it a little bit, you're going to be able to see a little bit of a shine on your piece. And if you don't have any shine, you might want just a little bit more. I'm going to put just a little bit more on these back side because I know those will be the last areas I get into and then that'll be ready for me to get started. Now I usually just put this on the entire surface just the first time around then the rest of the project I'm actually um, using the extender in the paint and in the brush itself. To begin with I'm going to use my double-ended brush and it has a round on one side and then it has a uh, kind of a dome dry brush blender on the other. But I am going to dip both of them into the extender and blot them off on the paper towel. I want to use an extender instead of water for the majority of the project. If my brush gets dirty, I'll still clean it in the water, but uh, the extender is going to give me more time to play with all of the areas. So I'm going to get quite a bit of paint, kind of really put that into that round brush, pat that in good, and I'm going to start with this first petal, and I put it on pretty heavy because I want a lot of color on there. So I'm going to really put that on and then I flip the brush around and I use the clean side of that blender to just softly kind of pat that down into the canvas itself. It's just like magic, almost a little bit more like working with a oil. In between time, as it gets dirty, I kind of go in a circular motion on my paper towel to get the excess paint off of there. And then I'll keep going. I, I don't want to just keep following all the edges, so I want to kind of skip a little area here. Turn my brush around and just softly catch the outside edges to make that kind of melt down in. Sometimes you need to do a couple coats of this, but I wait until I get more of the piece done before I worry about doing a second coat. A little bit more paint. And I want to get one more spot somewhere down here in the bottom of this petal. And there again, flip the brush around and just very, very delicate touch. You don't want to have a lot of pressure. It's very, very soft. Let that melt right down in. So the whole canvas was base coated with the medium white to begin with, which is a great neutral color uh, to use for your rose. Okay, then I'm going to get some more on this other petal here. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I'm coming into the piece and then I'm going to catch both sides. What that does is that gives a little bit more of a rolled curve to the petal itself. Just soft, soft, wipe off the excess on your paper towel in between time. And I'm going to create an edge right here, which will finish kind of giving the body of the rose a little bit and blend that in. So all I'm doing is applying it with one side and softening and blending with the other. And I'm using my paint a little thicker than I normally would so that I get a nice coverage. And I kind of work at trying to get a little bit of that graphite covered each time I go near it with the color, but I can always um, go back after and get the outside edges with some of the medium white as well. Okay, so and then um, this one coming down here, I want to kind of pat it in the middle of the petal, turn the brush around, soften both sides, coming down in. Later I'll be adding some pink into some of these areas and some yellow. But for me it's easier to figure out where all the highlights are on a uh, rose to begin with and then I go back and do my shadows. You certainly could do it the other way around but I just see things that pop out right at me to begin with and so that's why I start with the highlights and just really softening, patting that in. Now because of the way the light was coming through this particular rose, 
I am doing the inside bottom of that same petal here, softening, kind of leaving the center area, the medium white, because it was kind of shining through, that light was shining through the back side of the petal. So sometimes the light can kind of fool you and areas that normally you would think should have a shadow, they can actually have a lighter, um, uh, a lighter highlight area because of the way the light is hitting it. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going here. Let's get this back petal up here. And like I said, I would have softened those graphite lines a little bit more if I was doing this on my own as a finished piece. But if I use enough paint, I'll still be able to cover even these dark of a line. And just soften. Now, if you were to make a big mistake, just take a little piece of a wet paper towel and wipe it off and try it again. The um, extender blending medium acts like kind of a safety net and allows you to wipe things off and try it again. So I kind of like that as well. Gives you a little bit of a foolproof plan. And get some on the edge up here. So basically, you're just going to kind of follow. It's almost like I've created a little bit of a map for you with the step-by-step -step photos so that you can see exactly where each of the highlights go. And really pay attention that not every edge has it all the way around the petal. So for instance, this petal here that I'm working on right now, I want to skip an area so that it... I have some areas that are going to have a little darker edge than others. And let's see, I want to get some across the top. I might mess into some of these areas as I work and get some of the other colors going, and that's okay. I can always come back and reinforce those areas as, uh, once again. This one I'm softening down. And you can see this is just really a quick way of doing the um, blending. I've gotten to where I really don't like floating color anymore, which is a corner load on either a flat or an angle brush. I just find this extender blending method just so much easier to blend the acrylics. And a lot of my students that uh, originally started with oils are able to adapt to the acrylics much better being able to do this type of a technique. Okay, so now the petal that I'm working on right now, what I did was I went through the center on one side and then I'm coming to the bottom edge on the other side. It's gonna create a little bit different look for the roll of the petal, the way that it rolls. And just soften. If you go outside the lines, there, that would be another little trick I could show you. I would take a clean brush, um, say like the small angle, and I would take and I would just cut with just water on the brush and you can see I can wipe right out of the area that I've messed into. So nice little trick to undo some of the problem areas. In the center of this bottom petal, I want the highlight to be right in the middle. Don't be too skimpy. I'm using quite a bit of paint and I want it to be pretty wide. If I don't have uh, a big enough circle, it's not going to give me a nice curve to the petal. It'll uh, make it look like you've actually folded it in half. And we want a nice round, gentle curve to that petal. And then I'm just softening around the outside edges. If you blend too much away, put some more on and try it again. Okay. And then I've got one more petal to do, and I'll have all my basic highlights done. So a little bit on the top edge here. 
flip the brush around, soften, and you'll notice that I'm not always going right into the middle of the paint. Sometimes I just want to get that edge where I stopped, and I want to leave nice dark paint there. Another um, thing I'm going to show you here too, uh, in fact, let me go back here, I want to explain this. When I put the color down, I am not pulling it in to the rose like that. I'm actually catching that outside edge. I just want to make sure that I'm clear about that so that otherwise if you keep pulling it in, you're never going to blend it. All you're going to do is make that paint continue to travel. Okay, now this, I want it to roll in the middle here, so I'm going to start out on the edge, and I'm going to make kind of like a, a little triangle or a little funnel, like a little tornado coming up through the petal. Don't be too skinny because we want this to be a wide curve. And there again, I'm going to hit the outside edge and just soften that edge away on both sides because I don't want to pull it out much further than I've already got it. And really soften that down in. Wipe the extra off on your paper towel in between time as you go along. And that's going to give me a nice curve to that petal. And I think one more spot on that one and we'll call it good. So a little bit more, and I'll maybe pull some in a little there, give it a little bit more of a ruffle. And soften that. And we have all of our highlights done. Okay, then I'm going to switch and I'm going to go ahead and do my shadows. I'm going to rinse my brush in the water. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse both sides. I will do the blender brush and the round brush. Make sure I don't have any of the previous color. Really blot that off on my paper towel. But then I'm going to redress both of them in the extender again because I want the extender in the brush, not the, not the water, so that I have more time to blend. I'm not going to moisten the petals again. This time, if I need longer time to blend, I'll put a little drop of the extender right into the paint color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, medium gray, but I'm going to soften it just a little bit with uh, some of my original base coat color, which was the medium white. I'll mix a little of that together, and you can either brush mix or you could use um, a palette knife. Either way, I just want to soften that gray a little bit so it's not quite so dark. And I think I want just a little bit more yet. So probably about half and half, I think. Squeeze just a little more in there because I want to be able to darken it just a little bit more at the end, and at the end I'll be using the medium gray all by itself. You could also use, they have a color called light gray, and you could use that instead of mixing if you don't want to mix. But a lot of times by taking your um, background color and actually putting it into some of your um, mixes makes it blend a little bit nicer together. All right, so now I'm going to take a look. I have um, on step number two here, you're going to see some gray areas. And those are all the areas that I'm going to hit next with this um, little gray mix that I've made. So still using quite a bit of paint on the brush. And let's start back on that first petal again. I want it to kind of dip in some areas. So I've made kind of like a little triangle, turn the brush around, and soften. And you'll notice I didn't even have to stop and wait for my white to dry because I'm kind of working in separate areas. So I'm able to just kind of continue and move along. If I want it to dip in at the bottom edge here, I'll put another one and just soften. 
Okay, wipe the extra off. Just kind of go in a circle on your paper towel. If you start feeling like you're picking up some of the color, and then I'm going, I, and I'm good, I've got one little highlight that I'm going to, or highlight shadow that I'm going to save for last, and I'll explain that afterwards. I want to get a little crevice here, so this round brush has a really, really nice point on it, so I'm able to do a lot of things that normally I would have had to be switching to a liner brush in between. It allows me to get in these nice little crevices without having to switch the brush out. So I want to create a shadow down in there. I want to get a little bit of a shadow just on the very edge where the graphite line is. And I'm going to try and keep some of my medium white still showing in between. One thing that happens a lot is um, people have a tendency to get the shadow and the white touching right up against each other. You want it to be separated, in, in most cases, by the medium white. All right, then I want to get a little bit of a shadow going up in the top here. And it's just, I love that I can just paint it in. I don't have to be doing a corner load and trying to um, get it to blend out. I can just soften it in any direction I want. Flip the brush again, get down into the little crevice. And I have blown this rose up and I've done it even on a um, 16 by 20 canvas and it's really fun to do it large. I do have a larger double-ended brush as well. The uh, Dirty Dancer comes in both a small and a large so you'll want to switch to the large one for doing a larger project. And let's maybe get just a little bit on this top edge right towards that corner there. Give it a little bit of a curve back and just soften. Okay, clean my brush on my paper towel in between times and just keep moving right along here. I'm going to tuck some down into the little crevice right there and that part can just be filled in because that's in a real shadow and then I'll come up above that little piece of petal there and just soften that top area tuck some in to separate the next one and just brushing that in. A little paint goes a long way so it really doesn't take a lot to do this piece. And you can certainly, you know, substitute colors. You can use your favorite colors to do this. Let's tuck some down into the little kind of crevice there and under that petal. Turn the brush, soften that edge so that I don't have a hard edge in the middle of the petal. And let's see, we want to get, um, let's see this, let's get underneath that front rolled edge and come down the side a little bit, flip my brush, soften that edge, and it's starting to take shape. There's a couple areas that I'm not going to put shadows because I know I'm going to have a um, pink color that's going to act like a shadow, so no need to put the gray in there now. And get that under that rolled edge, flip the brush, and soften. And one more petal to go. Okay, now this petal, I want it to look like it's indenting here. So I'm going to actually come in and create kind of a rounded edge. Come up the side, almost like filling it right into that other area. Okay. 
I want, I, I want this to stay a little bit more definite right here. I want it soft, but I don't want to blend it out too far because I want that to take on a deeper shadow so it looks like it's denting in right there. A little more paint. Let's get some on the outside edge down here. And turn the brush, soften. If I were to get too carried away, I would have the option also to come back and put some of the um, medium white in to create a little bit better transition. And as soon as I get a little bit more of my shadow on this, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because I think half the battle is knowing how to fix some of your mistakes. And then it just makes it a lot more fun to paint if you know you can correct it if a problem comes up. Okay, so let me clean my brush and I still have that one other shadow that I've got to drop down. But I want to show you before I get too far along how to correct a mistake. Okay, because I washed my brush, I've got to put that extender back in again on both of the, both sides of the brush, but I really wipe them off good on the paper towel. Okay, I've got just a little drop of the medium white on my palette here. I'm just going to pull from there. Okay, so if I decided I've got um, my gray and my white too close together, I can come back right in between the two and separate them with my base coat color, which is the medium white, and then just soften on each side again, and it helps it melt back in the way it should. So easy, easy fix. Any area that you may have gotten a little too carried away, that's how you're gonna fix it. Okay, rinse my brush, put the extender back in, blot it on the towel. I've got that one last little shadow here, and that is, I'm gonna thin it just a little bit so a little more transparent this time. I've been using it heavy for all the other areas, but now this is the petal actually casting a shadow. So this petal up here was casting a shadow. Uh, maybe a little too skimpy. We want to see it. And so I want it transparent. And the shadow just came right from touching the corner all the way down. And you're not going to blend it too much, just to kind of soften that edge, but you want it to stay a little bit more of a stripe. Just like that, because you're able to see into the back of the petal. All right, I think I have gotten all of my shadows in there, so now we're ready for some pretty color. Rinse my brush, blot it off, and I am going to Step number three, and that is um, my gold colors that are going to go in there. And you can see that I've got some down at the base and a little bit more in the center areas. Uh, a lot of times the roses will have color coming in through the center areas, but not the outside petals. So that's what I'm going to do on here next. I am going to take a little bit of the yellow oxide. Sometimes I use um, yellow deep, yellow oxide. Um, any of the golden colors will work just fine. All right, uh, put my brush in extender, blot it on the towel. Not sure if I have enough extender in the other side, so just to be safe, I'm going to put it in and blot it again and get a little bit of the yellow here, the yellow oxide. And let's start maybe up in this area here and just kind of get some into that little crevice and soften. And it's kind of a transparent color, so you still see a little bit, if you put it like over shadow areas, you're still going to see a little bit 
of the original color that might be down there already. A little bit in the corner and soften. And you certainly could be turning your piece upside down, sideways, whatever you need to do to make it easier. I got just a little piece of yellow on there that I didn't want, so I'm just lifting it off. Okay, and let's get some down into the crevice here. You can decide how uh, intense you want this. It's your rose. If you like lots of color, go ahead and, and have a lot on there. Otherwise, if you like it soft, you can do it very pastel. As long as you're consistent throughout the whole piece, it doesn't have to look just like mine. Just keep it, keep it consistent, either bold color or soft. And let's get one more spot on the bottom here. And I'm just soft, soft touch. I'm not pushing down on the um, project or bending the bristles. Just a soft, soft touch. And flip the brush and soften the edge. And so now I've got my yellows in there. Then uh, the next step is to put some pink in there and I'm going to actually use baby pink. And that'll make a nice soft pink color. So when you look at step number four here, you're gonna see that I've just got on some of the edges and tick uh, tucked in to a few little pl places here and there just to give it a little bit more interest. Uh, rinse that yellow out of my brush, blot it off, but then put the extender back in. And I, I'm just going to dip the other end. Sometimes you can even just clean the brush in the extender, so I'm, that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so let's get some of the baby pink. And I'm just going to put that along the edge here. And there again, if I need to cover graphite lines, I can always come back with a second coat after if I need to. And soften. I like to just kind of work on where the colors go. And then once I've got everything in there, then I go back and I do correcting and cleaning up and um, creating you know, a little bit more contrast. I'm going to put a little bit right on top of some of the yellow down here too. A little bit more on there. And pink is my absolute favorite color, so I got to get a little more pink in here. Now there's one skinny little petal here and that just gets filled in. So I'm just going to take and tuck that in, filling in that whole little rolled petal going through the center and try to leave um, you know kind of ruffled edges try not to smooth it or straighten it out too much so I'm not going to even blend that that was just filled in to catch that little edge um, I want to get some in the petal up here and you'll notice I brought some down into the petal just kind of soften it and some of it went on the edge. Clean my brush because I'm kind of picking up a little bit. Soften again. And let's see where else. Let's get some on this petal here. I could go in the center instead of on an edge. And then just soften both sides. As long as you don't jump too far in um, color value, you're able to blend these colors very nicely together. Okay, and soften again. And just tuck a little bit more into this center area. And soften them. And I'll be putting some darker pink in next. But just kind of take it one step at a time. Top edge, 
of this front petal and soften it and a little bit more maybe on the side here. Flip the brush and soften. And I can still add more pink uh, later if I take another look at it and decide I want a little bit more. All right. We are now um, going to, in fact, here, let me take this one. I was jumping the gun just a little bit. Okay, number five. Now I'm going to add some little bit darker pink, especially in the center areas. Uh, and deepen a few of the lighter pink areas, but not absolutely every single area. I want to see some light pink and some of the darker pink. So for the darker pink, you have lots of choices. I have the um, Napa Red in the Americana right now. Uh, sometimes I use the Quinacridon Violet um, in the traditions or uh, medium red rose makes another pretty color so any kind of a dark pink that you like okay so I'm just cleaning my brush in water but there again now I'm going to redress it in the extender wipe it off on the towel but I do both sides and I'm going to start with the very center of the rose because that's the easiest I definitely want to get tuck some right in the middle Flip the brush, kind of catch the top edge so that center hole in the rose has a shadow in the bottom part of it. And then I'm going to separate that. It kind of forms like a cone because they kind of wrap around each other. So I'm going to separate that from the petal behind it, kind of soften keeping that kind of in the crevice or the darkest areas. Kind of come up the side. That'll help cover the graphite. And just soften. Um, let's come down the side. And I should be able to get both sides at the same time. And soften. And it's just kind of fun to play with different colors. You don't have to stick to the same colors all the time. There's so many beautiful roses that you can use for inspiration. And sometimes when you go to paint them, it's just almost like it's hard to believe that those colors are where they are on the flower. Let's maybe get oh, somewhere up here. I want to put a little bit of a, a darker tint, but I don't want to do all the way across. Just a little kind of hit and miss here and there. And it feels a little dry, so I'm going to get a little extender on my brush, but I blot it and get a little bit more color. If it's not moving, put just a tiny little drop into your paint color so that it'll, it'll go on smoothly. And just soften that in. You can decide how much of this you want. Sometimes it's nice to keep it a little more pastel. I have a hard time staying pastel. I love bold color. And maybe a little bit more on the outside edge here. And soften that. All right. So now I have my darker pink color in there. Um, the piece also has a little dew drop. And that is done um, pretty simply, so and it's pretty little, but I'm going to attempt to show you here. I'm going to start out with the gray. 
and I do have um, an enlarged sample here. So basically, I'm going to outline it with gray. I'm going to shade with gray under the drop and inside the drop. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to highlight with white inside the bottom of the drop and then a white dot. And I've enlarged it on the photo for you to make it a little bit easier for you to see when you go to paint this. So first thing, I've just got to kind of draw like a little outline. I'm going to add just a touch more extender into that paint. And I'm just using my 20 aught liner now. And I'm just outlining the shape of the drop. Okay. And then I want to get under the bottom left part of that drop. And then I'm going to take my blender brush and just soften that so you don't see the outside edge. And then I want to get inside the drop. And I just want to make sure that I've got that cleaned out. And I want to soften inside the little drop. Clean my brush because now I want uh, the brighter white. Take a little extender and get that right mixed right into the white paint. And that goes in the bottom left inside the drop itself. And I'm actually, because it's so little, I'm going to use the point of my round brush that's clean to just soften that edge this time. And then it just needs a little white dot in the upper area. And then you've got your little dewdrop. So not a whole lot to them. Okay. I'm going to deepen just um, a couple of areas with the um, medium gray and it's only off to the right side that I want to deepen. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of the medium gray, um, extender in my brush. Remember we lightened up that medium gray before and I just want to catch some of these little crevices on the right side of the rows. So not the entire length that I had that gray shadow before. I'm keeping more into the little bottom areas. Maybe stop about halfway and blend that in. Get down into the little corners. And turning the brush, softening, and get uh, underneath the front edge. I'm not going to go the entire length. I want to kind of hit some of the uh, indent areas to make them a little darker. That way, it makes like part of the makes it look like part of the petal is further back than the rest. Let's maybe get underneath here. and soften. And I do want a little bit um, right in this. Oh, and I picked up some yellow, so let me get that off before I create too much of a mess. I'm just going to take, and this is a good way to show you how to do it too. I'm gently, gently lifting off. I had a little dab of yellow paint, just gently lifting that off with my blender brush. And I honestly don't mind if that gets mixed in because it's, it's going to melt right into the rest of the area anyway. So that'll be fine. Okay, so let's get a little bit more of that dark gray, a little closer to the petal, and soften. And then I just wanted a little tint, very, very, very little tint of the um, red 
which was that Napa red, just barely a little bit in there, and then let's soften that in. So just kind of dab it and soften it in. Kind of takes the harshness away of all that gray in that big area. Clean my brush and soften. All right. Um, I would then, uh, this would probably the sta be the stage that I would go, with go through and kind of clean up some of my white areas, um, make them a little bit bolder, clean up the edges. Um, to, to make it um, a little sharper and cleaner. Okay, then the next step that we're going to do is I have some leaves and I've already started. Oh, uh, part of the leaves here because once you see one leaf they basically it's just pretty repetitive so here I've got all those steps done and they're dry that I showed you to begin with then what I did was I base coated the leaves in and I used pine green and I lightened it up with a little bit of the medium gray and I want to say it's probably two parts uh, pine green and one part medium gray. So when you put it on your palette, um, you could do like two little squeezes of green, one little squeeze of the gray, and then mix that up with your palette knife. Or you may have your favorite green color that already comes mixed up that you could use just as it is. But this was the color that I mixed to do the base coat. And the one thing that um, I just want to uh, share with you, and I'll just do a couple little spots here. When I base coat, if you get used to pulling in the direction that the vein lines would be going, if you have any kind of ridges or brush marks, at least they're going in the right direction. So that's kind of a, a good little tip to keep in mind. Okay, so because I've got them already base coated, I'm gonna start right in with my shadows. Okay, this time I'm gonna switch to my small angle brush, my quarter inch angle, and I'm going to be using, uh, let's see, what do I have? Black Forest Green, a little bit of that. I'm still going to be using extender, okay, so I'm going to dip that brush in the extender, blot it on the towel. Um, I'll leave a little bit more in the brush this time, but I'm not going to moisten the leaves. I think they're going to be okay just the way they are. So what I've done now is I've showed you in step number six, I've got shadows going on here. And some of the leaves will have shadow on the outside on one side and inside of the opposite side. The one in the middle here happens to have it on both sides of the center. So uh, let me show you a couple of these leaves. I'm going to corner load with the Black Forest Green and I kind of get the extra off on my palette. So if I were to start with, and I'm going to turn this now because I need to get a little bit better angle. If I can visualize my center vein line um, and I were to do my vein lines coming out, I want to give myself maybe a little guideline by making a little V shape. That's the direction that I want the uh, vein lines to be angled. But when I actually do the shadow, the color on the brush is right up against the center. And I do a short little stroke, lift, short little stroke, lift. And what this does, by having that lift area, it kind of gives the impression that you've got little vein lines starting to happen in there. And then for the opposite side, that's why I give myself a little guideline because sometimes you get going the wrong direction and you want to, you've got to almost kind of flip that brush. So when you're tracing your pattern on, um, once you've based in the leaf, you may want to go back and, and go ahead and give yourself the um, angle 
of the main lines so that you get these in the right direction. Now, you'll notice I didn't pull out to get that shadow. All the color of the brush is always next to the center vein line when I do both sides. I didn't pull it out into the leaf. And that's another and that that's another way of doing it, but this way I've just done it starting to give the impression of the veins. All right, so then I've got, I'm going to turn this again on this other outside leaf. I've done along the outside edge, a little corner load, black forest green. Now, at any time, if this is not blending right, I can always stop and use my blender brush on my Dirty Dancer to soften away any harsh edges. But I've, it's kind of like I'm doing that corner load, but I'm using the extender instead of water, so it gives me a little bit more, like I said, a safety net. Um, and I want to do the outside edge of this smaller leaf as long as I've got the direction going. I might as well get that half of it as well. And then I'm going to want to turn this because in order to get the correct angle next to the center, it's easier for me to um, pull towards myself instead of trying to contort my hand in all different directions. I could have put this on with my round brush and blend it out, but this way I've got those little vein lines where I've stopped and left a little bit of space in between. Do the same thing on this other little short leaf. Okay, and then you'll notice that I've already done these other leaves and it was basically going up underneath, you know, the flower and a little bit down because these were just a little bit different, so a little bit on the top under the flower. And then um, I also have right next to the leaves on top of the stem itself. Okay, all right, so now I'm ready to do my highlights on the leaf. I'm going to rinse that brush out and I'm going to switch back to my um, double-ended brush now for doing the highlights. I just love that brush. Okay, so let's get extender in both sides of the brush again. And I want a kind of a softer green color. And I can either use one that's pre-mixed, like maybe the Hauser Green Light. And if I need to add a little bit um, lighter color to that, I can. I can put a little white in it, or I can even put a little bit of the medium white in there. So I'm going to get the medium white handy just in case. Sometimes you don't know until you actually get onto the, pro um, to the piece to see what the color is doing. Okay, so I'm going to start with this front leaf here, and I want to get a highlight coming. Let's try just by itself. Let's see how, if it shows up. So I'm going to, I'm going to just put some in between here, and then I want to soften. What I want to do is I want to keep the color in the center of the leaf, so I'm going to soften both ends. And it looks like I'm going to need just a little bit of that medium white in there because it's not showing up quite as much as I want. So let's get some of that, make it an even lighter green. So if I make like a little square, flip my brush and I'm going to soften on both sides to get that highlight. What I want to do is create a center highlight going through so it kind of makes it look like the leaf is rolling. So getting those little squares soften. Kind of clean my brush on the towel in between time. And soften. 
And that's basically it. So I just kind of pick areas that I want to bump out further than others. Sometimes I might highlight the whole edge of a leaf or I may want to do the rolled centers like this and then just soften in each direction. So you'll notice that on this leaf over here I did the outside edge but here I did the center. So it just gives you a different look to your leaves as you're working on them. So in fact let me just go ahead and do, um, let's do the I'm going to turn this again. Let's just do the outside edge of this one here. And I think I can work quick enough. But when you're first starting, maybe just do one at a time and soften. And I'm just going to soften in. And that's basically it for the leaves. So it's just a lot of repeating. I can pull out from the center instead of the instead of using the angle brush I can use this. So either one is going to work. You play with it and experiment. A lot of times you're going to find one brush works a little bit easier for you than another and you don't know till you give it a try. You just might find that you like one over another. So Get a little bit more brushed in here and soften. And I don't want to mess up um, or get rid of my shadow, but I want it to kind of melt or blend into it. Just lay down the color, flip the brush over, and soften. Okay, I'm almost got this. Let's just hurry and get this because I want to get to the background and show you that fun background. Lay that in and soften. And just remember, if it's not blending nicely for you, put just a little drop of extender either into the paint or a little bit more on your blending brush and soften it that way. Okay, how about uh, maybe just a little bit of this other green I think on the edge here. It was just looking a little too flat so just a little bit more color there and then I think the leaves are good. And just soften with your brush. Okay, now the fun part. Love doing the background. Okay, now the background is actually uh, kind of modeled and I did do it last. I didn't do it first and a lot of times um, that probably would be easier to do the background like I'm going to do first but as I was designing this I really didn't know what it was that I wanted to do with the background. I just kind of let it happen as I went along. So if you take a look at um, here is the rose, step number eight, and what I've done is I've just kind of slip slapped some pinks and some greens into the background. And so let me start with that. If you're able to work quickly, I would just use water on a half inch angle brush or even a flat brush. And I'm going to start with the pink, get a little bit of the pink on my brush, kind of wipe the extra off. Now when you go to put it on, think of the letter X and slip slap like the letter X. Okay, and just keep it soft and I'm just, and if I get too carried away I can always slip slap some of my base color which was the medium white. So I've thinned that pink down and I'm going to get a little bit in the bottom here too so I kind of did opposite corners a little more pink on the brush and slip slap that in and if I use water it's going to dry faster so that I can do the next step sooner which will be to stencil a little design almost like a shabby chic kind of a look clean my brush and now I'm going to get some of the green in there so let me just take some of the 
lighter green. Let's see if that shows up. I think that'll work. And just kind of slip slap that in. If you need a little bit more time blending, go ahead and, and use extender, but then make sure that you blow dry it before you do your stencil. It can be a little bit more heavy handed with whichever is your favorite color. All right, and that is good enough. Okay, now you have lots of different stencils available and it doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm just, I think I'll take this one here and I'm gonna lay it down and I see I'm putting it in my paint. I'm gonna scoot that over just a hair and get that off before I make a mess. Okay, get that under here. Okay, and I'm going to, maybe if I tuck it under, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to use this part here. I'm actually going to use a blender brush. I mean, you certainly could use a stencil brush, but the blender brush, um, I just usually have one of those handy, so that's what I'm going to use. This time I'm going to use it dry, okay? And I'm going to start with some of the um, titanium white paint, and I want to really wipe all that off on my paper towel. So really circle that in. I want it really, really dry. Okay, then on my piece, in a little bit of a circular motion, I'm just going to kind of lightly go in the area of the design, a little bit more, wipe it off on the towel, little circular motion and I'm not trying to get this totally solid area like you would a normal stencil. I want some of the area to be darker and some lighter so it kind of fades in and out. When I get close to my design I'm going to be real careful once I get close to a leaf or a flower be careful you don't want to get cover up all your nice work Wipe the excess off on your towel and just kind of swirl that in. And a little more over here. Tap a little bit close to the leaf. Now, before I pull this off totally, I'm going to peek to see. And it worked. And then I can just, wherever I want this, Twist your design into different angles so that it's not exactly the same all over. Maybe I'll have down here, I'll have it coming off the edge a little bit more. How about more like that? Okay, get my towel handy here. Get the extra off. Swirl that in. The biggest thing is be careful not to get too much paint on your piece. And just swirl that around. Now, because this piece was not a size that you can get a ready-made frame for, I actually glued this to a mat. And then I framed it so that I was able to get a frame that would be the, uh, a ready-made frame. But see, isn't that fun? It's just, I just, you know, and sometimes I don't know when to quit because I just love doing this part of it. So just get a little bit more in here. Don't, they don't all have to be the same intensity. Get the extra off. Swirl that around. And just try not to get on top of your design. And you probably want to varnish this. You can either do a matte or, a, or a, like a semi-gloss or a, a uh, oh gosh, what the, not the uh, high gloss, yeah, semi-gloss. You could do a gloss too. All right, and that's all you do. So just as much of the design that you would like to put on there and just kind of have fun playing. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed watching this 
project and I really hope that you give it a try. I really think that you're going to enjoy uh, using the extender blending method and you notice that I did use the extender with both the Americana colors as well as the traditions. And I think that's good enough. So I think we've got it. I hope that you uh, visit my website where you can find many more of my designs, www.jellybean.net.